This was quite appropriate to paint today. Lulworth Castle isn't far away from where um, I live and I love these reenactments. These were jousters. I photographed this quite a long time ago and I painted it once. Um, a similar one, not the same. Now I'm going to start painting the jouster and I've drawn in Lulworth Castle behind because although it's not on our photograph that's sort of what it's about and I wanted the connection but I don't want to do this in too much detail so we'll paint him first and then we can see how much detail to put behind now I'm going to go for some lovely bright colours so let's start with some cadmium yellow and the light's hitting it in places so keep those light and dark shapes pull that through just a hint of colour on there on the tops, pull that through and then get thicker, all the bits that are in more shadow, and what we can do is we can add a little bit of orange into that cadmium yellow just there. And I can add a tiny bit of Prussian blue for the bits that are in a lot of shadow. Just pull that out a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with that. Now, there's some red on the top, so cadmium red is a really good colour to do those. Nice and vibrant, sort of a flag that comes down there. And there's something here that we don't know what it is, just paint what you see. And then we've got this cloak, which is sort of there in that red. where it's in highlights I'm going to use a cadmium orange so let's just pull that out onto the shoulder and that sort of comes down on that cape and then back to the cadmium red nice and thick and gungy wow and that's flowing what I'm trying to create is the movement that we've got in that spot on um, it's even darker there so into the alizarin crimson let's pull that through yeah we're getting the colour I'm happy with that it's lovely when you create an atmosphere not just a photograph now I'm going back into the cadmium yellow 
but I'm trying not to turn it green. So a nice strong yellow. shadowing and afterwards and so I'm not looking for every single bit of detail what I'm looking is for the movement that's a bit light around there so pull some of that out and that little bit of greeny yellow here and there's some bits of red so whilst that's still damp we can go in with some alizarin crimson and some cadmium so this is alizarin around the bottom and some of those shapes it doesn't have to be exact um, and then a little bit of cadmium red. Get some more yellow back into that here. And then this is some yellow under the horse's leg. And by putting these in, hopefully we can sort out what's what and what's where. the alizarin crimson just bleed that in a little bit that comes around there I'm just going to run a little bit of raw sienna across the foreground um, as that will give us a bit of warmth and it's quite sandy there pull some of that out and just catch the drips. And maybe a little bit of green too. So let's dip that into some Prussian blue. And I don't want to overdo this because I want the background to be very loose. And let's just merge some of that together quite faint. So you see, we're not fiddling, we're just catch those drips. Right, that's great. Now, I think for the horse, now some really, really good horse colours are burnt sienna, and I think some rich sepia would be good too. So let's start with our burnt sienna, sort of chestnutty horse colour. And where the light's catching it, just more water. It is quite light. It's a wispy mane bit. That's a bit lighter down that side. And there. Sort of checking out any lighter bits. Um, we'll do those legs, I think, when that dries in a minute, but we can carry on with the thicker, darker bits. That's dark there. That's white. It is white because the light's hitting it. Um, just a bit of nose. That's this colour. Bring that round. And then into the sepia, the rich sepia. So whilst that's wet, just tuck that up there. We can put some very dark lines in in a minute. And those will blend because it's wet. Down like that, underneath the tummy. Okay, I'm going to dry that so that we can pop the legs in. There's a touch of burnt sienna and a lot of 
rich sepia for those legs. I'm going to try and get some dry brush marks. just do a little washed out version of that for the, the hooves. And I'm just looking for any other very darks that we need to put in. I think that's even darker by the eye. That can... And just pop that in. Lots of pigment, not a lot of water. And that lovely eye there. I'm going to mix a little bit of Prussian blue into that. It's quite dark there. And add some of that down here. It's just hitting that a little bit. So. Now whilst we've got that on our brush, that lovely dark with a pressure blue and the sepia, I think we probably should put some of the darker bits on his hat and his armour. So that top bit was a little bit darker. And then the light catches it as we come down there. Top. Stop up from running because that's nice and light. And then some of that armour there. And that boot. And then a nice thick mix. And as you start to fill in bits, you can sort of see where you're going with it. I'll put the crinkles in a little bit later. Something dark there, I'm not sure what it is, but just put the shape in that we see. And then under the arm, face is quite dark under there, you can't really see what's going on. I'm just squinting quite a lot. The strap that comes down there. Okay, and then we've got some dark shadows here with things. So that's a red. blue in it as well I think it's very dark and then this is quite dark down here and what have we got here I think that's the yellow it's in shadow so that's red and yellow mixed together and then a little bit of red on there Now we'll put in some more definition in a minute, but that's sort of all the really loose stuff. So let's get that very dry. Now the movement's working really, really well with this. So I'm going to use my smaller brush. and I'm just going to put in any definition that would just make it look sort of even smarter. Let's go for a littering crimson and that cape sort of that's the arm a 
definite shape there. And then we've got a few definite shapes at the top, so yellow with a little bit of blue, I think. Oh, let's wash that. Russian blue, cadmium yellow. And let's just get a definite shape in there. is that I overdo this and I'm really trying not to. Let's go back to that green mix. That's a definite shape there. Definite shadow. I think we'll add a little bit of red here just to define it. Yeah, that's probably enough. I'm really scared of doing too much and it is looking lovely and loose at the moment. So now for some sepia and some Prussian blue mixed together for a nice black almost. And let's get that nose bit in there. I think it's quite nice when these go in. Um, and that comes off of there, the rain. These markings are rather nice to do. Onto that cloth, and that sort of comes from there like that. And underneath. And then those boots, a little bit more definition. working quite nicely. Now a little bit of the sepia the shadow underneath that band and then I'm going to use my card and I think I'm going for a dark mark down there rather than the yellow because the yellow is not going to show up so I'm going to use the littering crimson and the Prussian blue and I'm just going to rub that along the edge of my card that goes through his hand now we're drawing the hand in a minute and we can just pull that out a little bit and I think we just do that as well so just tidies it up a little bit and touch of light red that little hand just there right, I think the first thing I need to do is to get a little bit of um, sky in in cobalt blue and I'm going to run some of that into the castle so nice and watery And then for the castle, I'm going to use a little bit of cobalt blue and a little bit of light red. And keep it almost like a water bath. That's my intention. So we've got a bit of shadow that runs down here. And here. And there. So that's sort of simple. That shape. And those 
shapes. Well, I could go quite dark in places, but I really don't think I ought to. Let's even keep those windows fairly light. We can maybe go a little bit thicker, but keep them not dark, dark. So it's just a thicker blue. There's another door here. Now with that same sort of thickness, let's just add a few of the dark marks. So without sort of doing very much, we know that that's Lulworth Castle behind there. I'm just having a look. I think maybe join that into there. Yeah, I'm liking the feel of that. There's a window there. I don't think I should go any darker because it's going to fight with it, but we can see that that's Lulworth Castle. So before I do anything else, I'm going to get it really dry and then I'm going to take out the pencil marks. Right, I'm just going to do a little bit of squinting. Grab some rich sepia to start with. I think we can get a little bit of shape in here. Darken that a little bit. And then it's quite a lot darker that side. Okay, that's standing out a little bit more. I think that could actually be darker too, so put another wash of the burnt sienna over it. That's made it a lot more defined. I think that could be darker there too. And I don't want so many white gaps around everything. Okay, now there's a lot of light hitting that there. So I'm gonna try and take out some of that paint. So with some clear water, Let's just see if we can get some of that out. Because so we've lost that highlight. In fact, what I'm going to do is get a little bit of magic sponge. I have to be careful because you can just do this a little bit too much and then we've got more detail than we want. Now I've just dampened that sponge. I'm just pulling back some of that highlight and then we'll go back in with the darks in a minute. It's amazing what you can do um, to sort something out. a little bit messy to start with but I think it's better to get the highlights back that we've lost maybe down here too I 
Now I'll leave that to dry and then I'll take some of that off. Now whilst that's drying, I'm just going to do a little bit of shadow. So I'm going to use some of the cobalt blue and the light red. look where that shadow is that he's kicking up the horse there is kicking up sand but I don't think we want to really put that in because we've not painted that horse in we can now I'm squinting that needs to be darker so anything that needs to just be altered now is the time to do it it's just it's lighter than that, but it isn't as light as I've done it. Now that should make a big difference. Catch the drips. Well, I'm just squinting everywhere else. It's looking a lot better. I just tidy up that shape a little bit. So some cadmium red and the lizarine crimson. And that's what's come through there. definite shape there. I'm careful because I can I realize I can mess this up and I'm trying not to. So I think these definite shapes here bring those back and that sort of shape there. That light's now showing up, which is good. And let's just make some of those more definite. All right, that light's coming through, so that's good. And I'm inclined to leave it like that because we've got lots of movement and the danger really is that you keep going and you overwork it. Um, that, that's really what I wanted to achieve. So thank you for watching.